Hello and welcome to Holy Trinity Presbyterian Church and our Monday Thursday celebration of worship. We are glad that you could be with us today. We are also going to have a celebration of worship today with our drive-in worship service at 5 p.m. Uh, just stay in your car and you can, can worship with us in there. And it's a little shorter service, about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, with the Lord's Supper being celebrated there as well. Speaking of which, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper with this service, so now would be a great time to pause your video, go and get some wine or grape juice and some bread and set it aside because you are going to need that if you want to celebrate the Lord's Supper with us. Don't worry, I'll wait for you. You can go get it now. Just, just pause your video. Okay, now welcome back. So glad that you are here. Uh, in terms of this celebration of worship, there is no benediction at the end. This is a Monday Thursday service, so it will end without a benediction because the worship service actually continues on Easter at our sunrise service, which will be at 7 a.m. on Easter morning with a drive-in worship service. Otherwise, you can also join us online with an online worship service on Easter, as well as a drive-in worship service at 9.30 a.m. Friends, though it's a great day to be alive and a great day to worship God, let us now be about the spirit of worship. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, be in our midst on this Monday Thursday as we gather together the night before your son was to be crucified. Help us to prepare ourselves for the life that you would have us to lead as a result of the coming death and resurrection of your son, Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. Let us join now in our call to worship, which is we found here on the screen. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. On this day, Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. On this day, Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. On this day, Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. On this day, Christ, our God, gave us this holy feast that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection and the last day may reign with him in heaven. Friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, prepare us this day for the coming of your son, Jesus Christ, on his resurrection on Easter. But let us not rush forward to that. Let us be certain to, to spend time truly comprehending what happened on this night. In Christ's name we pray, amen. As we gather together as Christians, we do so as a fallen people. Even though we try our best, we still sin and fall short of the glory of God. But thanks be to God, we can come together in our confession to the Lord and know that right here, right now, we may be forgiven. Let us therefore confess our sins to God and one another using the prayer of confession, which is actually a litany contained on the screen. My brothers and sisters, Christ shows us his love by becoming a humble servant. Let us draw near to God and confess our sin in the truth of his spirit. Merciful God, we have not loved you with all our heart and mind and strength and soul. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not loved our neighbors as you have taught us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not fully received the saving grace of your word and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, 
have mercy. May the Lord have mercy upon us, forgive and heal us by his steadfast love, made known to us by the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, open our ears that we may hear, open our hearts that we may feel, open our minds that we may comprehend the words that you bring to us today in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is John, drawn from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Listen for these words of the Lord. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he would loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who've had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we pray together. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight this day and indeed every day. Amen. When you think of holidays, what days come to mind? Uh, Christmas certainly pops out and Easter, maybe Thanksgiving, perhaps Memorial Day in the unofficial start of summer or Labor Day in the unofficial end of summer. <laughs> maybe even today, April Fool's Day comes to mind. But you know what? Easter is a big one. A and we look forward to it. Well, Christmas as well, Thanksgiving. These are big days when our families gather together. We have feasts. We, we spend time with one another. Perhaps go to church and worship the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful thing. When was the last time, though, you heard somebody say they were looking forward to Monday, Thursday? just isn't one that's on the radar screen. Oh, many churches, not perhaps even most, many churches do have a Monday, Thursday worship service, but yet not too many people talk about looking forward to the holiday known as Monday, Thursday. Just as those 24 feet of the disciples that Christ washed were just a tad bit dirty and dusty, the church, oftentimes on Monday, Thursday, is a bit dusty. Our worship attendance is always low on Monday, Thursday. It's just not a day we celebrate. But yet, it's a very, very important day for you and me and for the entire church. It was on this night, on Monday, Thursday, that Jesus has his last night on earth. 
what is he going to do? The next day he is going to be crucified. He will die on a cross. So this night before, he speaks to his disciples, even as Judas is about to betray him. And Jesus offers, offers some magnificent advice and does some things that we are supposed to stop and pay attention to. And what happens? First of all, Jesus takes a water basin. He takes off his outer garment, puts a towel around him, and then he goes and washes the feet of the disciples. The feet of the disciples. Think about that for a moment. He's washing their feet. Now, for you and I, that really, even though it might sound odd, it really isn't that big of a deal. Uh, why? We wear shoes. We wear socks. Largely, our feet remain clean, unless perhaps you're walking around in sandals, which is precisely what his disciples would have worn. They wouldn't have had socks. They would have worn sandals. And as they're walking around in their sandals, they're accumulating dirt. By the way, prior to 1900, what was the number one source of pollution in the world? The number one source of pollution. Uh, you might think it's air pollution. Eh, maybe. I don't think so. I think the statistics and the research shows something else. It was horse manure, donkey manure, animal manure. Fact is, as these folks are walking up and down the streets, wherever they were, they were walking in dirt and mud. And yes, my dear friends, they were occasionally walking in horse manure. <laughs> Just think how dirty that job is. Could you imagine President Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, uh, uh, McConnell, or any of our House of Representatives or Senators washing the feet of others? What about our governor, Governor DeSantis? How about the CEO of Disney or GM? Mike Rowe of Dirty Jobs might do it, but I don't think you'd see any of them jumping to their feet to wash the feet of others. But yet, but yet, it is something powerful. Schools of leadership, people who go get MBAs, are taught that there is a way to lead. And the way you lead is being out front, to be out front of everybody else. But that is not what Christ is showing here. Instead of being out front to lead a cavalry charge, Christ shows a different model. And he starts by cheering others on, by supporting his disciples, even to the point of getting down and washing their feet. His model is very simple. Serve, serve, be a servant leader to serve those who are around you and then be an example of humility as we move forward. There is a man who passed away a number of years ago, Charlie Brown. No, not the Peanuts character. Charlie Brown was the chief executive officer of AT&T Corporation. Charlie Brown's mother was nothing more than a telephone operator. His dad worked for AT&T, but not in a senior level capacity. Charlie Brown served in World War II, went to college and came back and started at a very low position within AT&T and progressively worked his way up. At one point, Zig Ziglar had talked to him and interviewed him and asked him about his success. And, and when, when it happened, he said, well, yes, I've been very successful. But the first thing is, is I've never sought a promotion. The promotions were always offered to me. But I discovered, this is Charlie Brown, I discovered something. What I discovered was, if I help everybody else around me, if I serve all of those who are around me, I will naturally be pulled in by their wake as they move up. That I have made it my life school to serve others. And he was known to his death as a very humble man. Christ is specifically calling us to be humble, to serve others, even to the point of washing their feet. I tried to rack my brain to think of what would be something that would be comparable to washing someone's feet today, but yet it applies uniquely to each and every one of us. You have to figure out what it is for you. 
What is it for you that would be the equivalent of Jesus washing the feet? And our task then becomes to serve others just as Jesus had served us. But there's something else. Jesus had an enemy. He very definitely had a man who was out to get him. He was going to betray him. And here in the scripture passage, it is very clear that even before Christ Jesus is crucified, all long before any of this happens, the Judas was right there at the meal with them. And what does the scripture teach? It teaches that he went and washed the feet of Judas. He even washed the feet of Judas, the man who was about to betray him. In the Gospel of John, Jesus offers a new commandment. He offers it not just once, but two times. Two times he offers a new commandment. And what is his new commandment? It's not what we have heard before in the rest of Scripture. You know, you remember, uh, what is the greatest commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your soul, and all your mind. Second is like it unto the first. You shall love one another as you love yourselves. But Christ in that context says, on these hang all the law and prophets. No, 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 no. Here we have a new commandment. And what does Jesus say? You shall love one another as I have loved you. Jesus Christ loved and served Judas even when he knew what Judas was going to do. Who, who are the people in your life that you have trouble getting along with? Uh, is there anyone who doesn't like you? Uh, dare I say? Is there anyone you don't particularly care for? Is there someone in your life that you might even describe as an enemy? Jesus doesn't just say we need to be courteous to them. He doesn't call us to just be kind to them. He actually says to love them, to figuratively wash their feet whatever needs to be done, that we will love them even, even if they prove to be our enemies. But there's also something hidden in there. And at one point, Christ says, if you love one another, this will be a mark of you as my disciples. They will know you are my disciples if you love one another. The mark of a true Christian, of a true Christian, is the ability to love one another. If that is missing, then Christ is also missing. And it, by the way, it is a love that comes from in here, not just on the outside for show. There is a saying, reputation is what others think of you, but character is what God knows about you. Reputation is something that's on the outside. It's what others see and think of us. But character is what is on the inside. Character is what drives everything else. We can, yes, hide things on the outside. We could create a veneer. But if, if the underneath the veneer, if the wood is rotten, eventually the veneer will fall apart. It is what is at the core that drives what is on the outside. The Protestant faith, the very Protestant faith, is focused on faith itself, not works. It's not that the works aren't important. Absolutely, they're important. But the faith is what drives everything else. It's what drives the things that we do. Reputation is what others think of you. But character is what God sees in your heart and in my heart as well. And that's what Christ on this Monday th Thursday calls us up to. Monday, Thursday is hidden. It's one of those holidays that is just, just not a holiday. People don't celebrate it. But yet, dear friends, it is an important day. It's a very important day. Because on this day, Jesus not only had his last supper and gave final words and washed the feet of the disciples, but it will be this day when Judas will leave and prepare to betray him. And tomorrow Christ will die on a cross. And he will die on a cross because of what you have done and what I have done for the sins that we have committed. But my dear friends, it's a powerful day. Maybe not as powerful as Good Friday, but it's one we need to remember. 
And what are some of the teachings that Jesus gives us on this Monday Thursday? First is humility. Humility. The, the all-omniscient, all-powerful son of the living God got down on his feet to wash the feet, the feet of his disciples. How do you and I serve others? Figuratively, by washing their feet. We are called to be humble servants of the Lord by serving others. We are called to radically love others, even those with whom we disagree, or even those with whom we may not care for, or particularly don't care for us. Love one another as I have loved you is the new commandment. But how will people know we are Christian? They will know we are Christian by our love. Not just our reputation, but by the character that's on the inside that clearly shows that we are followers of Jesus Christ. Friends, tomorrow is Good Friday. Tomorrow Christ will die on a cross for you and me. He will then go to the grave for three days and we know what will happen on Easter. But for this moment, Easter has yet to come. Our task is to live up to the call that Christ has given us by being humble, loving one another as Christ has loved us, and being people of Christian character. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, as we gather together on this Monday, Thursday, uh, we continue to have all of our concerns and our joys as well. If you have any prayers of, of concern or joy, please share them with the church office. You can call us, you can leave them on email, and we will be glad to pray for you here in worship, either online or in the live drive-in worship service. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this Monday Thursday, and we thank you for the gift that you have given us through your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord God, we pray for the many who continue to struggle from the pandemic, for those who have lost loved ones, for young men and women in uniform, wherever they may be. We pray for our first responders, the nurses, the medical doctors, all who are in harm's way treating us. But Lord, there are some people we do know of within our congregation and those that we know of. We pray for Roger and Bev Smith, the entire Wolcott family, David, Chuck and Judy, Joanne, Ron, Terry, Betsy, Yuna, Ed, and Greg, for Darlene, Freddie, and Alice, Alan, Rick, Bob, and Dee, for Reagan, Michael, and Layla, Bob, and Gary, for little Ames, Nottingham, Pat, uh, Jordan, Sharon Bird, Judy and Dominic, Otis, Jack Flint, Don, and those who are known only in the whispers of our hearts. Lord God, hear our prayer. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper, I just want to remind you, because it is Monday, Thursday, this service, this celebration of worship, continues on Sunday morning at sunrise. So there is no benediction at the end. When we are done here today, we just pause our worship celebration, and it continues with sunrise worship on Sunday, which is a wonderful thing. We are very grateful to the stated clerk of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA, which has granted a dispensation so that we are able to celebrate the Lord's Supper uh, virtually over the internet during this time of the pandemic. We very much look forward to the day when we can do this once again in person, but we are grateful for the ability to continue with our worship as we are in the midst of the pandemic. May it quickly come to an end. All who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are welcome at this, which is his feast. Friends, may we pray together. Gracious and loving God, just as you sent your son to be with us on that Monday Thursday almost 2,000 years ago. 
just as you sent him to the cross to die for us on Good Friday and then brought him back from the dead on Easter morning. We pray that you would send, mystically by the power of your Holy Spirit, your Son and you, God the Father, three in one, to be with us right here, right now. So as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we may mystically experience your very presence in our lives today. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took a common loaf of bread. When he had blessed it and given thanks, he broke it. He turned to his disciples and he said, This is my body, which has been broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took a common cup of wine. When he had blessed it and given thanks, he turned to his disciples and he said, This cup represents the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Friends, this is the food of God for the people of God. Come. The body of Christ that was broken for you, eat all of it. The blood of Christ that was shed for you, drink all of it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this bread and for this cup. Help us to remember and never forget the incredible gift that you gave to us through your Son, Christ Jesus. Help us to recommit our lives in service to you, being worthy of being called the moniker Christian, showing humility in service to all that are around us, loving others precisely as Christ has loved us, even those with whom we disagree. And may we, Lord, as we go through life, just truly represent Christ in our lives, in both our reputation and our character. Now, Lord God, hear our prayer as we say the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just a word of thank you. Thank you for all of the support that you have given to Holy Trinity. Thank you for your checks. Thank you for your online donations, however you give. All we can say is thank you. Let us bring forth our weekly tithes and offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, accept these gifts we bring to you. But as always, not just the gifts of money or our pocketbooks, but the gifts of our hearts, so that in everything we think, say, and do, it would be through your holy name. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, our worship service now comes to an end. I invite you to take some time now for private prayer and meditation. Just sit quietly wherever you are to pray and meditate and think about what God has done for you through Christ Jesus. And I look forward to seeing you on Easter morning.